Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Watch Mojo, and yeah, okay, the channel maybe isn't everyone's favorite, but the topic of the video actually seems quite interesting, as I always say. I'm trying to think of a different word, but I can't. Interesting is just the word that I say. Um, and the video is top 20 normal looking pictures with disturbing backstories, and I mean, yeah, I've not really done a video like this before, so I mean, it'll be something new for me to see, but I wonder if I've seen any of these pictures before, because obviously there's like videos out there like oh, there's like things on the on twitter or whatever like maybe may more like maybe i mean videos not pictures um of like 10 pictures taken before disaster and just stuff like that so i mean it's probably similar to that but maybe a bit more darker a bit darker in terms of like the like what happened after it but we're gonna see hopefully go into enjoy shout out to my instagram my twitter links in the description for those who want to follow same for patreon links all there for those interested Patreon exclusive videos that get blocked on YouTube, etc., or just extra reactions that I do are in the link in the description. So, yeah, that's for those who care for that. But let's just jump into this and see what this video has to offer. I'm just looking at the suggested videos. 13 horrifying incidents that happen live. There's some interesting suggestions here. I might have to save a few of these for future reactions, man. Picture perfect? Think again. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're. So, this is what the girl who speaks sound. Like, I've always wondered what she looks like because she, she's in every video. She's got like, the most YouTube recognizable voice. Counting down our picks for the top 20 normal Rebecca. looking pictures with disturbing backstories. For this list, we're looking at photos that seem perfectly innocent until you do some further reading. Number 20, Tragedy by the Sea. At first glance, this photo might appear romantic. After all, it shows a couple on a windswept beach. But look closer and the woman's distraught expression says it all. Right. Yeah, she doesn't look happy. I wouldn't say that's necessarily a normal look. I mean, it's not unnormal, but she looks a bit Just stressed Before out. photographer John L. Gaunt took the shot, the couple's 19-month-old son had been happily playing in their yard, but he wandered off and disappeared into the waves. The couple is standing on the shore, realizing their son is gone. Oh, this photo man. actually won the 1955 Pulitzer Prize, and given the backstory, it's a haunting shot of sudden and unexpected tragedy. Oh, Number shit. 19, that the is, Space uh... Shuttle Challenger Crew. It's unclear where the astronauts in this photo are going, but they appear excited and optimistic about whatever's on the horizon. Doing some digging, you'll find that the crew was walking out of the operations and checkout building. They were headed for pad 39B, where the space shuttle Challenger was about to take off. The STS-51L mission was notable for its diverse crew, although that's sadly not what it's best remembered for. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. Only a minute after launching, the space shuttle exploded. 73.5 seconds. Challenger's engine shut down. Why have I never heard about this before? The last data from Challenger is radioed to Earth. While nobody knows precisely when each crew member died, nobody survived after the spacecraft hit the ocean. This oh, photo was shit, taken man. on January 20. Oh no, I've never heard about this before. Maybe I should do a deep look at just this specific story. 1986, mere hours before the crew unknowingly embarked on what would be their final mission. Number 18, Christopher McCandless. With a grin across his face, the man in this picture appears to be waving hello, but he was actually waving goodbye. This bearded explorer is Christopher McCandless, the subject of the 2007 biopic Into the Wild. Is there anybody here? Leaving his old life behind, McCandless decided to fend for himself in Mother Nature's backyard, eventually seeking refuge in an abandoned Fairbanks bus 142. In August 1992, the 24-year-old McCandless died at Stampede Trail, Alaska, most likely due to starvation. Based on the last self-photo he took, it's evident McCandless knew his days were numbered. <sighs> <laughs> While it's hard to make out, bro, dying that lonely, I, it gave me like a feeling in my stomach. Man, dying that lonely must be the most depressing out, thing. The man. paper McCandless is holding is his farewell message, reading, "Quote: I have had a happy life and thank the Lord. Goodbye and may God bless all." Number seventeen, lightning strike. While the numbers vary, the odds of getting struck by lightning are relatively slim. That doesn't mean you shouldn't take lightning safety seriously, though. This photo of 18-year-old oh. Michael McQuilkin and his 12-year-old brother Sean has served as a cautionary tale ever since it was taken in 1975. Posing together at Morrow Rock, the brothers were goofing around with their hair standing on end. 
Their static hair and those storm clouds in the background were more foreboding than either realized, as lightning struck them shortly after their sister took the picture. Another hiker died, and while the brother survived, Sean was left with third-degree burns and took his own life in 1989. <laughs> I mean, I hear a lot of stories about people surviving lightning strikes. It's actually a lot more common than I realise. Like, how is it even possible, man? It's a fucking lightning strike. Like, what? Michael continues to spread awareness about the dangers and warning signs of lightning. This just scares me, though. Number 16. Another day in Oma. Looking at this photo, the first thing you're inclined to notice is the man standing in the street and the child on his shoulders. Meanwhile, the red car parked on the side of the road appears inconsequential. What you might not realize is that the photo was taken in Oma, a Northern Ireland town, on August 15, 1998, not long before this car blew up. The real Irish Republican Army, a splinter group, executed this car bombing five days after the Good Friday Agreement was signed. 500 pounds of explosives detonated inside a red Vauxhall Cavalier parked on the roadside, pulverizing surrounding buildings. Man, it's crazy to me how the, the stuff that was happening in, like, Northern Ireland um, was actually so recent, like somewhere so close here and partially because of my country. I don't actually know the in-depth history, so I don't want to say something wrong, but I know my, um, England or the UK were involved a lot, probably a lot more bad than good. I don't know the in-depth about it, but like, man, it's crazy to me how this was happening so close to home and it was so recent. You don't expect this in like, the British Isles or the, the islands around here. Like, it's just, I don't know, it's crazy to me. Although the real IRA claimed that innocent civilians were not their target, 29 <laughs> lives were lost in the bombing and Fucking roughly 220 man. were injured. It was the biggest loss of life in a single attack in Northern Ireland. While the man in... So these are the IRA, so that wasn't... That wasn't the... Evening. child thankfully survived the bombing. The person behind the camera did not. Number 15, Fuck. David A. Johnston. Wow. While not a household name, David A. Johnston was a revered volcanologist who, along with the United States Geological Survey, helped save thousands of people through his on-site work. Tragically, Johnston lost his own life in the process. All seems well in this photo, as Johnston sits in a chair outside looking into the camera. Little did anyone know that within the next 13 hours, Johnston would perish in the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Wow. The eruption, preceded by seismic Craziest activity, was first well. reported by Johnston, who radioed the message, quote, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. Within the next seconds, the signal went out and Johnston was never heard from again. So I guess I had the realization right away that um, this was some kind of a tragedy. and. Uh, on the one hand, it was this huge, exciting, and interesting magmatic eruption, and on the other hand, it was I was pretty certain that something terrible had happened to Dave. While his remains were never found, it's believed that Johnston died what? at Coldwater 2, a post that wasn't as safe as anticipated. I think one of the things to put in perspective is that 234 square miles of that area of Washington were devastated by that blast, so 5.7 miles? Yeah. That was within that yeah. devastation zone, yeah. the blast zone. Number 14, Mark Jackson's basketball card. For diehard sports fans, you'll recognize the player on this basketball card as Mark Jackson, who started his NBA career with the New York Knicks and later coached the Golden State Warriors. At first glance, this card would likely blend in with the rest of your collection. Take a closer look at the lower left-hand corner, though. You see those two young fans sitting in the front row? They are Lyle and Eric Menendez, two wealthy brothers who took the lives- Oh my god, these- The parents, right? Oh my fucking hell! Yo, this is for this video is wild, man. That is nuts. In the front row, they are Lyle and Eric Menendez, two wealthy brothers who took the lives of their allegedly abusive parents on August twentieth, nineteen eighty nine. The brothers who were thought to have it all at times acting out even going as far as robbing houses until they were caught. The brothers weren't arrested for these crimes until March 8th, 1990. And in between that time, they spent an extravagant amount of money. So at the time, nothing seemed suspicious to you about them? No. But soon detectives shifted their focus. The brothers were out there spending money like it was water. It appears that some of that fortune went towards Nick's tickets before their apprehension. So this is after. Number 13, oh. Rodney Alcala. If we asked you to name the man in this photo, you might take a wild guess and say Christoph Waltz if he had Weird Al's hairdresser. No, in reality, this. he's Rodney Alcala, the dating game killer. How did he get such an outlandish nickname? Because Alcala appeared on the dating game prior to his- Oh, do you know this guy? Oh, he is weird looking. I saw a video 
of like what he did and he was like on a dating show and like the girl picked him but then didn't pick him because he was acting too weird or something acting like really strange and yet it's probably a good decision because he was known for just killing people 1979 arrest the woman who won a date with him ended up backing out saying yeah. she found him creepy come on over here <laughs> <laughs> intuition probably out, saved her life. Others would not be so fortunate. While his total victim count could be as high as 130, Alcala was trialed for five murders in 2010, almost 31 years after his apprehension. Alcala represented himself in court, as seen in this picture. Even remorse, more bizarre, Alcala was his own defense witness, asking yeah. himself, quote, Rodney, would you please tell us about your hair? Alcala ultimately received the death sentence, although he's still awaiting execution to this date. Number 12, Ayano Tokumasu. Remember that scene in Superman 2 where a little boy falls over the rail at Niagara Falls? Oh my God. Well, that sort of thing happens more often than you think, but Superman sadly isn't around to save the day. On the surface, there doesn't- I shouldn't be, laugh, but that clip was so To be anything fake, particularly man. special about this photo, which sees several people gathering at Niagara River. The woman in the red sweater is Ayano Tokumasu, an exchange student from Japan. If you think standing on that pillar seems kind of dangerous, you'd be right. Not long after the photo was taken, she lost her balance and fell over the edge, oh, ultimately going down Horseshoe Falls. Tokumasu was swept from the river's Canadian side to its American side, where her lifeless body was discovered. People just go too far, you know? I don't blame anything on the park. I just think people wanted to get that extra edge, get closer, get closer. And unfortunately, things happen. That's Number 11, the go. SS Grand Con. The SS Grand Con may not be a household name like the Titanic, but it's forever linked to the Texas City disaster. And this photo captured Texas the vessel City just disaster? before tragedy no. spiraled out of control. On April 16, 1947, smoke was seen emitting from the docked ship in Texas City. A fire had broken out with about 2,200 tons of ammonium nitrate aboard. This naturally oh. amounted to an explosion, but that was only the beginning. Texas City, Texas was joined by a tremendous blast. The blast ignited a subsequent explosion on the High Flyer, Isn't another ship people? carrying ammonium nitrate. And about 8.15, they housed me to come aboard the ship that they had a fire down in the hole. We went aboard the ship and we seen smoke coming up from between the cargo on the side of the ship. The ensuing chain reaction resulted in a loss of 581 lives, with only one survivor from the local fire department. Number 10, Apollo 1 pool party. The space pod in the swimming pool is huh? only the second weirdest thing about this photo. Like, how often do you see astronauts lounging on water floats while wearing their spacesuits? Surely there must be a humorous story behind such a surreal image. Unfortunately, it's quite the opposite. The suited up astronauts in this photo were Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger B. Chaffee. They were training for the Apollo 1 mission, which was planned to commence in February of 1967. On January 27th of that year, a fire broke out in the cabin during a pre-launch test. Unable to open the hatch door, the three men perished in the fire, which was caused by electrical problems. Thus, the mission ended before it Shit. even started. The pad where Grissom, oh, Chaffee, and White died is now a memorial. Lieutenant Colonel Virgil Grissom, U.S. Air Force, and Lieutenant Commander Roger Chaffee are buried at the Arlington National Cemetery. Lieutenant Colonel Edward White is interred at West Point Military Academy. Number nine, bear photographer. Oh, there are no. countless photos of bears out there, and he this one doesn't look didn't. much different from all the rest. Since the picture was taken from a distance and the bear isn't charging, the photographer seemingly isn't in any immediate danger. After uh, Darsh- Catch me in a situation, I'm, I mean, you don't want to run because if you catch the bear's attention, obviously that itself is not a great thing because it would just chase you and eat you like that. But get out of the line of sight, man. Like it's quite close, you can tell it's quite close. Again, even if it isn't charging, like, yeah, but I'm gone. Patel <laughs> snapped this pic using his phone, however. The How could a bear's hearing? Is it, is it more their smell or is it their hearing? That's very good. The bear started to follow him and his friends. The group split up as the bear began to close in on them, ultimately pursuing Patel. 
His phone was eventually found with animal teeth marks, while Patel's body was discovered at a nearby ravine. A scenic oh, Sunday afternoon ended in horror movie. when five hikers crossed paths with a 300-pound black bear that looked similar to this one. The bear was still hanging around the 22-year-old's fatally mauled remains, and the authorities took the wild animal out. We believe this bear was about four years old. It was not a tagged bear, meaning it had no history with the DEP. There was no research done on this bear that we know of. It had no previous incidents of aggression that would have called it to our attention. This photo op came at a steep price for Patel and the bear. Number eight, what are you smiling at? The two men being escorted in this photo are Richard Hickok and Perry Edward Smith. Although handcuffs are visible, the jolly smile on Smith's face suggests they're only in for a mild offense. This couldn't be further from the truth. Ever hear of a book called In Cold Blood? Well, Hickok and Smith provided the basis for this best-selling true crime novel. The two criminals were convicted for the Clutter family murders and sentenced to death. Richard Hickok, the first to be executed, decided by a coin toss. Perry Smith's what? was second. In this chilling photo, Hickok and Smith can be seen leaving the courtroom right after receiving the guilty verdict. Much can be said about Smith's haunting grin. If there's one takeaway from the image, though, it's that this crime was indeed cold-blooded. Number seven. BTK at graduation. Okay, I was just, I kept looking to the right because my streamlight, streamlight froze for a second and I was shitting myself. Whew, I was scared for a second. I thought this whole video was going to get corrupted. Dennis Rader was his church's president, a Cub Scout leader, and an all around pillar of the community. As you can tell from this photo, Rader was also a family man who seemed quite proud of his daughter Carrie at her college graduation. This would all be overshadowed, though, when Raider was exposed as the BTK Strangler, the letters standing for bind, torture, kill as his preferred MO. When BTK came forward, huh? everybody's life changed. He would see a woman walking and he would say, she's next. Over the course of multiple decades, this seemingly ordinary guy took 10 lives. In 2005, the authorities used Carrie Raider's DNA to link her father to a crime scene culminating in his arrest. Carrie had graduated from K-State, and while there, had tests at health services, both a pap smear and a biopsy. Investigators traveled to Manhattan with a subpoena in hand. How can you live such a normal life and then have your secret life just sort of hanging around you without your family knowing, man? Like, firstly for the family, like his own family, who's just been living in darkness and then realizing that their dad's actually this absolute creep monster just Absolute knobhead, pretty much. Knobhead not doing it justice, but you know what I'm trying to say, like... And then obviously for the, the victims as well, of course, but like, man, fuck this guy. And for those smears, her DNA, a direct match to DNA left at BTK crime scenes. Raider pled guilty and was subsequently sentenced to 10 consecutive life Evil sentences. Fuck, About 14 man. years after her father was captured, Carrie released a book entitled A Serial Killer's Daughter, My Story of Faith, Love, and Overcoming. That's been like a cathartic process of having to go do really hard work and find those memories again of my father that I had lost and to try to separate my dad back out as my dad and removed the BTK from it. Number six, Dutch girls of Panama. Huh? Scrolling through Instagram, chances are you'll stumble across a number of pleasant photos like these. She looks Standing tall as against hell. a colorful backdrop with green hills and blue skies, 22-year-old Lisana Froon appears to have a lovely day ahead of her. Froon was on vacation with 21-year-old Chris Kramers, a fellow Dutch student seen in another photo at the same spot. The two set out for a hike in Panama on April 1st, 2014 when these pics were taken. This was also the day that Froon and Kramers disappeared, resulting in a grueling search. Ten weeks down the line, Froon's backpack was uncovered with her camera inside. Froon and Kramer's remains were eventually found scattered across the jungle, with the cause of death still up for debate. Number five, what? Travis Alexander. Travis Alexander was 30 when this photo was taken of him in the shower. The person behind the camera was Jody Arias, with whom Alexander had a- This does not look like a normal picture. This is like the scariest picture that's going to lead to someone being like murdered or something. This is not a normal picture. Shaky romantic relationship. This was the last photo ever taken of Alexander alive, as his friends found his body in the shower a few days later. It was only a matter of time until the authorities connected the dots and arrested his ex-girlfriend. Arias constantly changed her story, originally pleading innocence, later claiming that two intruders broke in, and ultimately testifying that she killed Alexander in self-defense. Why? Um. She looks really familiar. Maybe they, I feel like there's... 
You know the JCS channel? Did he make a video of her? The JCS channel. The one who does like criminal investigations and like um, court and um, people like talking to officers and like breaking down certain things that they do. Um, the simple answer is that he attacked me and I defended myself. In the end, Arias was deemed guilty of first degree murder, receiving a life sentence. We the jury duly impaneled and sworn in the above entitled action upon our oaths do find the defendant as to count one first degree murder guilty. Alexander appears Evil off guard man. in this photo. He clearly had no idea what was coming. Number four, the eternal shadow. At face value, this dark outline of a person could be chalked up to some harmless graffiti. While we wish that were the case, this shadowy figure resulted from the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In August of 1945, the U.S. dropped two nuclear weapons, Little Boy and Fat Man, that resulted in anywhere between 129 and 226,000 deaths. At 8.14, it was a sunny day. At 8.15, it was a hellscape. Whoever this person was, it appears they were using a walking stick during their final moments when the blast hit. As a result of the bombing, an imprint of this unknown soul was left on the steps. This wasn't an isolated incident, as numerous shadows can still be found around the bombing sites, forever What? Yo, that is ridiculous. Immortalizing those horrifying days. Number three, the- I just want to see, I know this isn't really relevant, but Hiroshima, but how is it doing now? And Nagasaki? had been completely destroyed by the A-bomb, but gradually electricity, transportation, and other functions were restored. The people collected any unburned materials they could find and began rebuilding their homes and their lives. What about Nagasaki? Um. The radiation in Hiroshima Hiroshima and Nagasaki today is on par with the extremely low levels of background radiation. Nat natural radioactivity present anywhere on Earth. It has no effect on human bodies. Roughly 8% of all res residual radiation was emitted within 24 hours. What? Happy, creepy killer. Without any background information, the wide-eyed kid in this... This is not a normal looking picture. What is this normal looking picture shit? This is not normal. Picture bro. probably wouldn't strike you as very threatening. When you it know would. the whole story, however, <laughs> that innocent smile of his will quickly turn into a ghastly grin. Weird as this curly-haired 17-year-old is Jeffrey oh, Franklin, scary. who killed his parents and attacked his three oh. siblings. Wow. Following a car chase, the authorities cornered Franklin at a dead end. The photo shows Franklin in the back of a police vehicle, not appearing especially distraught over the atrocities he's committed or his impending future behind bars. Claiming he felt like a, quote, evil being had taken over him, Franklin pled guilty and received three consecutive life sentences. I, I don't blame anybody for the reactions to me because I feel that I justified most of them. Number two, goodbye John Lennon. We're all familiar with the music of John Lennon as well as his tragic fate. Photographer Paul Gorish couldn't have predicted it at the time, but this would reportedly be the last picture anyone took of Lennon. Man. The image seems innocent enough as the former Beatle signs his autograph for an apparent admirer. Lennon's impending demise was creeping up in the photo's corner, however. The man standing next to him is none other than Mark David Chapman, the one responsible for Lennon's Fuck untimely demise. Me. Hard to get to write at first. And then he wrote his name, John Lennon, and then underneath that, 1980. And he looked at me, as I mentioned earlier, he said, is that all? Do you want anything else? Six hours or so after this photo was taken, Lennon and Yoko Ono encountered Chapman again outside of their apartment building, the Dakota. With Lennon's back turned, Chapman drew his firearm, and the music world would never be the same again. So I called the Daily News. He said to me, um, you, you think you have what? And he said, Paul, are you sure that this is the man that, that you believe killed him? And I said, well, that's the man named Mark from Hawaii who was waiting out there all day with the album, who got the autograph. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Haiku honorable Stairs, mentions. Mystery Man in the Background. Hiking Tragedy, The Woman in the... F oh, it says Mystery Man in the Background. Does it say anything that happened? This is not a normal look picture. Mystery Man in the Background. Hiking Tragedy. 
Hiking tragedy. The woman in the photograph survived, but her hiking friend didn't. The woman in the photograph survived, but her hiking oh, friend really, yeah. didn't. His master's voice. Logo was inspired by a dog that heard its late owner's voice on a recording. Before huh? we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your Hadley and the red so switch on notifications. Number one, Tyler Hadley and the Red Solo Cup. Mere hours before raising his Red Solo Cup in this pic, 17-year-old Tyler Hadley hid his parents' cell phone and took three ecstasy pills. Hadley proceeded to end his mother's life with a hammer and then did the same to his father. After cleaning up the- And then he had a party, didn't he? I feel like I've seen this as well. Yeah, I have. And then like, he confessed to his friends or something, and then that's how everyone found Best. out. Hadley shared on Facebook he was throwing a party that very night. All in the name of a fucking party. How fucking how much of an absolute sicko do you have to be to do that so you can have a party? Like, are you are you fucking Oh my god man? That is ridiculous At said to me. Party, Hadley told his best friend Michael Mandel all about his heinous actions. After he told me I didn't believe him because he's been my best friend forever, I would never suspect anything like this. And I was looking around. He told me if I look at enough I can see signs. I looked on the floor, I could see signs of blood. And that's when I went around back and looked in his parents' bedroom. Using his phone, Aww. Mandel subsequently Aww. took this picture with Hadley, knowing it would be the last time they ever saw each other. Leaving the party, Mandel hid the pills Hadley planned to commit suicide with and called Crime Stoppers. This led to Hadley's arrest and life sentence without parole. Nearly three years of pain and worry now starting to slowly subside with the stroke of a gavel. Do you agree with our picks? Check out the absolutely ridiculous man how you can do such a thing for for any reason but to have a fucking party like jeez the most disturbing, disturbing thing about this video is how cheerful she sounds whilst giving us the details these parents on the beach have just realized that their son is dead t <laughs> for real man the man in child thankfully survived the bomb the bombing the person behind the camera did not my heart dropped take a closer look at the lower left corner though proceeds to pan further to the top down the first photo was sad. Imagine how they felt losing their child in the moment by look by looking at the pic. Very sad. Imagine dying and being an honourable mention on the. I was thinking, like, yeah, an honourable mention on this. Like, come on. Maybe just sleep as other mentions or other pictures or something. The Christopher McCandles um, photo is haunting. You can see death in his eyes as well as the acceptance of it. I don't know why they killed the bear. Bears are gonna. Bears are gonna bear. Good point, good point. But yeah, man, hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as you can, obviously. But yeah, this is an interesting video. I still found it, like, seeing these different things just crazy, man. And I mean, yeah, if there's more videos out there like this, please suggest them in the comments. And like I said, there's some suggested videos here that actually seem quite interesting. Quite long, but 13 horrifying incidents that happen live could be something that I could check out. And just, yeah, other ones of these, I don't know. We'll just see in the future, but hopefully you did enjoy this. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.